You're listening to Founders on Air with Steve Orenstein and Mike Rosenbaum. Hey, listeners. This is episode two of an interview with Tim Fung, CEO of Airtasker. So if you haven't heard episode one, I suggest that you stop now, go back and listen to episode one and come back and listen to this, this episode. There's so many great insights in this interview with Tim. So now kick back and we'll start just where we left off and we hope you really enjoy this uh, episode too. Thanks for listening. This podcast is sponsored by Parkhound, Australia's parking marketplace, to find a convenient parking space near your home or office. What's been the hardest thing personally that you've had to do so far in your journey at Airtasker? Yeah, so maybe I can answer you know, both questions at the same time. So in terms of what has been surprising, I think one of the things that I found has been a common thing that, that founders do is they get quite a long, far along the journey um, and they think that everyone else around them is fine and happy and engaged, et cetera. And then they kind of have this moment where they're like, oh, I'm actually not doing, you know, I'm not doing my job in keeping my team happy and engaged and excited about the mission. And so one of the things uh, for us that was a surprise is back in 2017, we 40 people or 50 people, we might want to think about getting someone in HR because we had like nobody in HR. It was just like managers look after you and, and that's it. Um, and so we hired Mahesh into people up. So he had um, some experience, you know, doing people ops at Canva and a few places like that before. And we took the bet on hiring someone much more senior than what we thought because we were actually originally just going to hire an HR admin. And so when we uh, when we brought him into the, the company, the impact was quite profound. Like, it was like, oh, my God, we're not doing any of the things that we're meant to be doing as leaders, you know. Like, we, um, we weren't working on um, things like documenting mission and, values and you know it was just kind of like unspoken stuff like you know why you're here it's awesome and you know we work hard and party hard and that's how we roll and get more bookings yeah exactly like <laughs> get more sales <laughs> so yeah i think a big surprise was how important that was and the impact that wasn't i'd say within a year and a half i was spending most of my time on that sort of um on that side of the business like getting the structure right documenting roles and responsibilities making sure that people are accountable for stuff so that was a surprise and then I guess in terms of what's uh, been hard, um, uh, look, I, I think it's not so hard for me, I don't think, but I think it is a hard thing to go through, uh, which is I think really like acknowledging your weaknesses. And I don't mean like, you know, on a service level, like, oh, I'm not a numbers guy, I'm more a written guy. I mean like really acknowledging where your motivations lie and what you're going to be good at um, in the business. And especially I think as a, um, the higher you get up in the organization, the more important as a leader it is to be able to acknowledge those weaknesses and, and confront them and be able to do something about them. Um, and so for me, I've definitely been on a journey of like every year learning. I'm not at the benchmark in this aspect of the business, but the reason why um, my job as the CEO is to figure out who's going to be good at that and make sure that they're there and they're going to um, be able to do that job. It's never easy, I guess, hearing what you're not good at especially when it's deep in your ego or your <laughs> core. You know. uh, thanks. It's very brave of you to share. And how do you go about that? I mean, do you do 360 feedbacks? Do you, you know, do you have a, a coach? How, how do you work on yourself? Yeah, yeah, so one of the things I started doing recently, and I would actually, it was something that they, they did at Macquarie where, where I worked, you know, like 10 years ago, but they did personality assessments. And I think that those are actually really useful. It doesn't mean that you have to take everything in there literally, etc but i've done there's a there's a, a website called truity.com and it's just like they run free you know it's a free personality assessment and it was so valuable it would just tell you you know you are not a person who thinks long term you're a person who thinks short term so you might want to have someone in your team who thinks about these longer term things and you know you focus on shorter term things it would tell you that you know you're a person who cares about self-performance more than other people's performance so, you know maybe you're not going to be a great manager maybe you should be an individual contributor so we've started rolling this out like amongst our leadership team there are other companies as well things like mindset 28 or fingerprint for success um, that are great platforms as well for for doing more in-depth stuff but i think starting with that is really good the other thing i think is just once you have that it's a great basis of discussion with your peers um, and I think especially as like a founder and a CEO, it's awesome to go, here are my weaknesses, you know, um, let's talk about that. Because I think unless you do it, no one else in the company is going to do it. So Yeah, it's pretty hard for an employee to tell you that you're really bad at doing something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I guess with feedback in general, like you got to 
really make that super, super easy. In fact, I wouldn't even say make it easy. It's like encourage it or force it. Yeah. You know, because otherwise you're not going to find out. And I think it's funny if you want to keep growing with your company as a founder, I think that this is what the the number one thing that you can do. Like ask the board, where am I failing? So that and get that consistently so that you can go solve it. Ignoring it is just like that's a pathway to, you know, you're not going to be the right person very quickly. Yeah, cool. This podcast is sponsored by Parkhound, Australia's parking marketplace. To find a convenient parking space near your home or office. And, and, and talking about like your board, what's your board structure sort of look like? So I would say that our board is mainly made up of investors and um, I'd probably acknowledge it's a bit suboptimal at the scale that we're at uh, right now. Something that, you know, we want to work on. Um, but it is, you know, again, as a, as a founder and entrepreneur, it is something that happens. You know, you raise a Series A, you get a board member. You raise a Series B, you get a board member. Yeah, right. um, and at some point, I think you've got to like review that. And what I have found to be amazing is how introspective, you know, a lot of uh, solid investors are. You know, at some point they are going to say, oh yeah, I'm not the best person for this to be a, a director of this company. Why don't we get someone else to do that? Um, and if you're aligned, which hopefully you are by, you know, the equity and stuff, um, that's a pretty easy conversation, to be honest. Um, yeah, okay. But yeah, I think the number one thing is just like the radical candor of this is where I suck, this is where you suck, let's just talk about that. Um, it just It's amazing when you have truth-seeking people who just want to make it better, then it always works out pretty well. Yeah, awesome. So you've shared quite a lot about human resources or um, people and talent, people and culture, which is great. I think that's a, that's a topic that lots of founders you know, want to hear about. So thank you for sharing that. What about, what's your North Star? What Do you have like a, a North Star that you guys just focus on or has that changed over time? Um, so I would say at the very beginning of Airtasker, we started Airtasker um, because we thought it'd be really cool. Like we thought like, hey, customers would really like this product and you know we're going to ship that to customers and 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 create something that's convenient and it's well priced and it's you know a good customer experience but actually a couple of years in we started just hanging out with more of our taskers in the community and um, we started realizing that wow like what we were doing was two-sided but the impact that we were having on taskers was just so much more profound than what we were having on customers like i think customers liked our product they're like awesome I got my drone out of a tree. I got my toilet uh, fixed or, or um, you know, I got a love poem written for my wife, whatever it was, right? But taskers were like, I am literally paying my mortgage, you know, using the money from Airtasker or like I was made redundant. I can't pay my bills. I use Airtasker to make money or people even escalating. Like um, I have this skill like knitting jumpers. Um, I could never monetize that before. Now I monetize it and now I'm doing this full time. Like we're just like that, that was super profound. And so um, our mission at Airtask is to empower people to realize the full value of their skills. And what we mean by that is we just want to help people like create jobs, create income, create a purpose for them, and basically make working life better uh, for people into the future. And so that's our North Star. Um, we are a two-sided marketplace, so we have to address both sides. And the number one thing we have to do uh, for um, job creation is to give people access to jobs, which is why we spend so much of our time and effort um, talking to the customer side of the market. Um, but ultimately what gets us out of bed and gets all the people at Airtask out of bed is create jobs for people and have a positive impact on the future of work. This podcast is sponsored by Zoom to You, Australia's on-demand courier marketplace. Get your parcels delivered within hours rather than days. That's really exciting. I think I might apply for a job. <laughs> <laughs> And so switching gears. Tired. Like, <laughs> 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 so so switching gears a little bit. You're involved with Tankstream Ventures, and so what's your involvement there? And, and like I'm sure you've seen lots and lots of pitches from lots of startups. And what advice would you give to a startup that's looking to raise capital and pitching? Yeah. So there's actually two bits to Tankstream. So early in the day uh, with Airtasker, basically we had a very fortunate that we had an investor who let us use part of the building that they owned as our um, as our initial office. And because back then there wasn't really any co-working space, I think Fishburners was around, but in the CBD there was no co-working space. The Airtasker office just started basically expanding out and became a co-working space, which was called Tankstream Labs. Off the back of that, this uh, same investor uh, that we'd had, uh, Bridge Lane Capital, 
was really interested in, in getting into venture. And so uh, Marcus from uh, Bridge Lane tapped me on the shoulder and, and Jono as well and said like, hey, can you help me you know, sit on the investment committee for, uh, for a venture fund that I want to start? So Jono and I did that for about three years and it turns out that it's really hard to start a startup at the same time run a co-working space at the same time sit on the IC of a, of a, venture, of a venture fund. Um, so we did that for about three years and, and recently... Uh, not recently, about two years ago, parted amicably from that. But it was a great experience to be to sit on the IC for a couple of years of that uh, fun. In terms of uh, what are people looking for, so obviously at seed stage, which is where we were, it's it's mostly about the team, um, not that much about the idea. It's really like, does this team have the chops to execute? One from a commercial perspective, and two from a from a technical perspective. We're also looking for people that weren't waiting around, you know, for something like anyone who's kind of saying, oh, and once I raise this money, then I'm going to do a bunch of this stuff. I think, you know, founders who really believe in what they're doing, they just go. So, yeah, but I would say ultimately it was really just looking at a team of people. The ideal situation was somebody who knew the problem space really well and then somebody who was really technical or operationally capable um, to, to execute on that. Yeah, cool. And when you think back to the number of deals that you saw, sort of, what, what, what do you think about sort of the percentage of people that you actually were able to fund? I think ours was seed is is really hard. Um, I think um, because you do have to deploy a certain amount of capital to make like you have to deploy enough bets to yeah. to be able to find a, a gem in there. And I think we did find a number of gems um, in there. We're in. Um, we're in Go One, which is a, a really interesting one. I think Biteable is another one um, that's got a really good um, chance of breaking out. So th- we did find certainly some gems. We also invested in a company which did one of the first uh, initial coin offerings, which was like, holy smokes, like what is an initial coin offering and why do you have 25 million US dollars in your bank account after <laughs> we only funded you for 500K? Wow. Um, so... Do, yeah. they st- do they still have that money in their bank account? I, I think they're deploying it. They're deploying it. So I mean, like it was real. Like they were actually building a marketplace where that that value could be that value could be exchanged. Awesome. So, yeah, it's pretty awesome. cool. Yeah, cool. And so when you think back to your journey from when you started to today, like what's been the best piece of advice someone's given you? Oi. Yeah, I'm not that. I'm probably not. What, one of the things that I found is like you get so much advice from so many different people, and basically, if you wrote down all of the advice, it would actually make absolutely no sense because every advice is counter to everybody else's um, advice. So, I guess I'm not going to answer that question directly about what the best piece of advice is, and I'd probably just say that the most important thing is your own conviction, like your own internal reference as to I know that this is good and I'm going to go do it. And so I think advice is something to be taken with a with a grain of salt. Yeah, I, th- I think that's really good advice. I remember early on in my early days of uh, being in business, I had a business coach and he told me a bunch of things to do. And I went about just doing them because I thought that he knew exactly what he was doing. Yeah. And it just turned out to be disastrous mistakes. Yeah, um, for sure. And uh, yeah, it was just all about believing in what you're doing because you ultimately have that knowledge. And you're going to make mistakes. So, yeah. you know, don't try to, I guess, um, outsource your mistakes to your coach or something. You know, just... <laughs> Do it and then own it. Yeah. <laughs> so, Tim, what's what's next for Airtasker? What's what's your big vision? So, we're really um, working on three main vectors um, of growth for Airtasker. But I might step back first and um, talk a little bit about, I guess, the hierarchy of needs that I've come kind of come to come to believe is true in any startup. Uh, for me, uh, or in, at least in, in at Airtasker. So, for me, the base of the pyramid is what we call freedom or financial independence which is really you need to be able to be in a position where you know you can turn up on Sunday and play, you know? And if that's going to be a big question mark for you all the time, I think you should try and solve that. So that's kind of the base of the hierarchy. The next thing for me is team and task of happiness. So we're really, really focused on building out a team who absolutely loves coming to work um, and having a task of community who just loves using a task of, um, to earn, and earn their living. On top of that, there's, of course, growth, and that's, um, I guess, what, what's the exciting bit. And I think if you do all of that, the value just comes. So when it comes to growth, three main vectors. Um, one is just excellence in the Australian marketplace. So we're doing a lot in, uh, we want to have best-in-class messaging, best-in-class um, auth, uh, authentication, best-in-class monetization, like fair uh, monetization, so that it really makes sense for, for customers. 
Um, the second thing we're doing is going international. So we're continuing to invest heavily into the UK um, and into Ireland, and we're looking to launch more countries as quickly as we can. Um, and then the third uh, vector is what we call the superstore. And so what Airtask has done in Australia is we basically built out this open marketplace model where you could post anything, get anything done. Um, what we're now going back and doing is optimizing into service categories. Um, so we've recently launched instant booking for cleaning. Uh, we've launched subscription cleaning so you can put your cleaning on autopilot. We've got instant booking removals. So if you're moving homes, you can get a price up front pay for it up front, it's all locked in, and then a tasker comes and loves that because they just pick up the order and, and go and do it. So yeah, those three strategies, Australian marketplace excellence, international growth, and uh, launching the Airtasker Superstore. Awesome. Sounds exciting. Thanks. Thanks so much for your time today, Tim. It's been really inspiring um, you know, hearing from you, and you've shared so many great insights, and um, we wish you much success into the future. So um, yeah, thanks for joining us on Founders On Air. Thanks. Thanks Thank, for having me. Thanks, Tim. You've been listening to Founders On Air with Steve Orenstein and Mike Rosenbaum, a podcast designed for founders by founders to help you scale your business. For show notes and to ask questions for future episodes, go to foundersonair.com. Thanks for listening. And don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time.